In this video, let's compare the Ecrono GX to the Serbo GX from Victron Energy. I have kind of a sample system set up here. You can see I have a solar charge controller, a MultiPlus inverter charger, a smart shunt battery monitor, and I also have a little water tank sender. This is a resistive tank sender. These are all plugged into the Ecrono GX. And you can take a look. We are currently plugged into the power grid and our little stove is on. That's our AC load. The screen is reporting all of that data. And I wanted to show you, we're gonna plug into the back of the Ecrono GX, but we can just as easily pop those cords out and transfer them down to the Servo GX. So this blue cord is from the MultiPlus. That's reporting our grid power and our AC load, our stove there. And then we have a couple of VE Direct cords. That's our solar charge controller and our smart shunt. Kind of tuck that behind there and you'll see that data start to populate there on the GX Touch 50. So I should mention the GX Touch 50 is actually a separate product from the Servo GX and that brings us to our first difference between these two. With the Servo GX, it has a Bluetooth signal and is able to output to your phone or tablet with the Victron Connect app. So you don't actually need a screen with the Servo. The brain and the screen are separate, so you can opt to just use your phone or tablet as your screen and not purchase one. Or you can get the five inch GX Touch 50 or you can get the GX Touch 70, which is about this size. And um, the Servo GX is gonna have the most options when it comes to the screen. With the Ecrano, you're gonna be stuck with the seven inch size. Now I say stuck kind of facetiously because it is a beautiful large screen. So I don't think you're gonna to be too disappointed, but uh, that is a distinction. You're gonna have lots of options for the screen on the Servo and one option with the Ecrano because they've gotta build all the electronics in the back of there and they had to make the screen a little bit larger to fit everything. I do wanna mention the Ecrano is based on the old Color Control GX. And uh, you can see with this one, all of the inputs are there on the back. So it was an all-in-one. Now, when the Servo GX came out, it usurped the Color Control and everybody thought it was great that the brain was separate from the screen or you didn't need the screen. And we thought that was a great innovation. And now people are saying with the Ecrano, it's all in one. You don't have a separate screen and all this. It's just one unit. So whether it's better to have it all in one or separate, I'll leave that up to you. But that is a distinction. One of the things that they did with the Ecrano is they improved the CPU. So the CPU speed is about double that of the Servo GX. Now I've run the Servo GX for a lot of years and I have never had an issue with things loading slowly. Um, the uh, only thing that I can tell is if I cut off the power and have both of these reboot, the Ecrono GX will turn on a lot faster. It'll go through its initialization and boot up a lot faster than the Servo will. However, these devices typically stay on all the time in your vehicle. So you're not going to be cutting them off and rebooting them constantly. But that was just a small detail I noticed. Now, to balance that out, the Servo GX has more inputs for the tanks and uh, temperatures, and I believe the digital inputs, than the Ecrano. So the Servo is winning in some regards. Now, as far as where they're the same, as I said, they have the Bluetooth. So both of them will actually output their screen to your phone or tablet with the Victron Connect app. And they can also use Bluetooth with the Ruby tags or the Mopika ProCheck tank sensors. These are gonna check your water or propane tanks. The Ruby tags are gonna do temperature and humidity. So those will report wirelessly to the Servo or the Ecrano. They both have a Wi-Fi router or Wi-Fi capability, I should say and they'll connect to the VRM portal, the Victron Remote Monitoring and Management Portal. You can look in on your system from anywhere in the world as long as these devices are connected to the internet. You can be on the other side of the world and look in on your system. And uh, it will also log data from what your system is doing and you'll be able to see graphs of 
of how your system's doing over time. And it also takes in things like your temperature sensors or your water tanks. So whatever you have connected to these will get reported to that portal. So they both do that. They're both running the Venus OS software. They have quite a few similarities. As far as installing them, I had a little bit of trouble with these templates. <laughs> um, they're a little bit out of scale. This is the Ecrono GX. When it came out of the box, I uh, tried to measure it exactly and I cut a hole that size and the, the printout was not to scale. So I would say look at the numbers that are on those uh, cutout documents, look at the millimeters and translate to that to inches if you need to, but uh, don't measure that document directly because I had to recut the hole for this. But other than that, the installation was pretty easy. The uh, GX Touch 50, you have to drill three holes with a Forstner bit or you could use a jigsaw, frankly. So the installation is pretty straightforward. As far as the screen for the Serbo, if you get the GX Touch 50 or 70 for the Serbo GX, the clearance behind the screen is going to be about a half inch because you just have the little cord for the screen itself. You don't need a lot of clearance, but with the Ecrono GX, you have all of the cords coming out of the back of the screen. So they want you to have 100 millimeters or four inches of clearance back there for all those cords to come out and route around. So the Acrono is going to require more space. So if you're in a tight space and you don't have a lot of clearance, I would go with the Serbo GX. Um, let's see, as far as the other differences, we're going to eventually pull these out of here and I'm going to show you the ports on the back and we're going to do an in-depth analysis on that. But I want to kind of tell a story as far as routing these screens really far away from the power system. So I've installed the Serbo GX in several vans and the situation we have here is not what I've experienced in the past. Typically the screen will be 25 to 30 feet away in the control panel and the power system might be at the back of the van. And so what I've done, you can see with this cord, let me unplug the screen here. It's actually got a USB and an HDMI connector there and they consolidate into this one cord but the cord is only six or seven feet long. So the Serbo GX conveniently is down in your power system with all these other devices. You can see this is about a foot away. This is maybe two feet away. That device is four feet away. So you can use kind of short cords, these blue and black cords here to network everything to the Serbo. And then if your screen is on the outside of the cabinet where your power system is, or maybe it's up above, with, within six to seven feet, you're good and the screen will plug in directly to the servo. But what I ended up doing is I had these extension cables. So we have a USB 3.0 extension and we have an HDMI extension. And so I would run these inside the wall between the control panel in the power system because I needed to extend this screen and uh, it made me a little bit uncomfortable. Now, full disclosure, it worked great. I did that twice and it worked fine in both vans. In one of the vans, the adaptive brightness feature was kind of squirrely and I attributed it to the extension cables that I used because I had never seen that before. It always works perfectly but I had run like 25 foot extension cables inside the wall. And so I think with USB, my understanding is that it runs at five volts and I don't know what kind of voltage drop. I know it's not a whole lot of current running through there, but if I had to run a long distance, I would go with the Chrono because the way that this is powered is it just has these little red and black power cables from your battery. It's going to take between eight and 70 volts DC, which the, Serbo GX also takes, but that power is running all the way to the screen. With the Serbo, your power is running to the Serbo, and then if your screen is 30 feet away, that screen power is running through that USB extension cable. So hopefully that all made sense, but uh, it just made me a little bit nervous. I think if you're gonna mount the screen for the Serbo within six or seven feet, if this is long enough, I think it's good, or, 
A lot of people just don't put a screen and they're going to pull it up on Bluetooth on their phone or tablet. Um, in that case, I think the Servo is great. But if you're going to mount it further away, I would go with the Acrono. So that power core goes all the way to where the Acrono is and can power up the screen. At this point, we need to pull the Acrono and the servo off the board and do a tabletop analysis and take a closer look at the inputs and ports that they have. But before we do that, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Band Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three major charging sources that you're going to find in vans or RVs, which are solar, shore, and alternator power. And it's going to talk about how they all have strengths, but they each have weaknesses as well. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, it's going to make sure that you're covered no matter where you go out on the road so you can enjoy what you went out there to do and you're not going to be worried about running out of power. It's also got a discussion about different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those that's going to help you narrow in on which battery type is going to be right for your project and then lastly it has a really cool diagram that kind of looks a little bit like you see here that's going to show your charging sources at the top and how that power makes its way through the system to charge your battery bank and how it comes out at your end devices such as your phone charger or your laptop for instance how, do, how does the alternator power make its way through the system and come out and charge your cell phone so it's a really illuminating diagram that's included with the Ultimate Band Power Cheat Sheet. To get your own copy, all you have to do is click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. All right, with that, let's pull these devices off the board and look a little bit closer. All right, so we have the Ecrano here and the Servo. And what I want to do is go ahead and start with the similarities. And I'm going to run through the things that they both have. So let's zoom in a little bit and i'm going to start off and show these two relays here on the ecrano you can see the same two relays there on the servo so those are programmable relays that can be set to go off under different parameters to start an engine or start a generator something like that so they both have those let's hop to the power port here this takes between 8 and 70 volts dc on the servo we have the same port on the Ecrano. Let's hop down to the inputs here at the bottom. And it says digital, tank, and temp. We also have those inputs here on the servo. They say tank, temp, and digital inputs. So we have four tank, four temperature, and four digital on the servo. And then on the Ecrano, we actually have less. So we have looks like two digital, three tank, and two temperature. So as you might imagine, these are hardwired inputs. And let me zoom out just a little bit and show what we're talking about. So this is a temperature sensor. It's a thermocouple. And uh, on the end, it's got two wires that are going to plug into positive and negative. So that's a hardwired temperature sensor from Victron. For the water tanks, it's going to be a resistive tank sender. And again, you're going to have those two wires on the end. They may not be these colors. I kind of made these colors up. But uh, you're going to have a positive and a negative wire, and they are going to plug into those tank inputs. Now, you might ask, why would Victron create the Ecrano, which is newer than the Servo? Why would they reduce the number of inputs? And one explanation may be that since the Ecrano was made, they come up, came up with these Bluetooth sensors. Um, actually, Ruby and Mopika came up with these. What I mean is that they worked with these companies to allow the Ecrano and the Servo to pick up the Bluetooth LE or low energy signal from these devices. So as time goes on, more people are adopting the wireless devices and you need less ports for hardwired temperature sensors and tank monitors. So that's my estimation of why they may have reduced the number of inputs there. So let's move on. We're going to go to the top of the servo and continue here on the back of the Ecrano. So we have a LAN port there to connect to a local area network. We also have that same port on the servo. We have two USBs on the Ecrano there and uh, on the servo we have three so 
The one thing that we want to look at though, if you can look at the front label, is that third USB port is to power the screen. As you saw earlier in the video, we were powering the screen from one of the USB ports. That's that third port. So because the Ecrano doesn't have a separate screen, it has the same two USB ports available that the Servo does. All right, so let's move on to the VE Direct ports. VE Direct ports are going to power the or connect to the smart shunt battery monitor or the solar charge controller, things like that. And um, the Ecrano also has three there at the top. So good deal. They are equivalent in that regard. I want to point out here, it says micro SD. I don't know if you can read that, but uh, that is where you can put in an SD card and update the firmware if the device is not connected to the internet. Let's say you're in the middle of nowhere and you need to update the firmware, you can bring in a micro SD and put it in that slot. And you also have that here on the servo as well. Let's see, we've got an HDMI port that's not needed on the Ecrano because that's for the separate screen that the Ecrano does not need. And then we have these RJ45 ports on the back. So we have six of them here and we have six of them on the Ecrano. You can see there at the top. So let's talk about these because they are a little bit different between these two devices. So we have two VE bus ports here. This first row on the Ecrano and the VE bus ports are this first row on the Servo. So those are equivalent and that is what I use to plug in the MultiPlus inverter charger. So any VE bus product from Victron would plug in there or here. So they're equivalent on that. Where they differ is in these last four ports. So I would say this is an innovation here on the Ecrano, an improvement. These are what you would call VE CAN, VE CAN 1 and VE CAN 2. And um, on the servo, they have VE CAN in the middle. So this is a CAN bus communication protocol. But here on the end, they have ports, they're called BMS CAN. You can't really see the label there, but it says BMS CAN. And um, I believe that was an older protocol for their um, BMS battery management systems. But basically what has happened with different communication protocols is basically they gave you one CAN port here to connect to things like the wake speed alternator regulator or even a sea level uh, water tank monitoring system that uses the RVC protocol. And you only had one port, so you had to pick RVC or the, uh, the wake speed uses a different protocol. And you had to basically pick a language to program these ports with and they're bonded together. And um, you were only able to pick one language, but you might need to use two different languages because you had different devices. So that's why they created VECAN1 and VECAN2. So basically this can speak one language and this can speak a different language to talk to two different devices that are using, one may use the RVC protocol and one may use the NMEA 2000 protocol for the uh, marine devices, something like that. But you basically have more options to run different communication protocols to more complex devices. That may be beyond the scope of today's video, but um, this is an improvement over what you had on the Servo GX. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight about these two devices. We kind of got down in the weeds to uh, really analyze the differences. One more thing I wanted to point out, you can see I have these spring-loaded clips on the Ecrano and uh, basically they are going to retract and I'll show you a clip here of how I inserted the Ecrano into the wood paneling and these basically are going to uh, snap back in place and hold the Ecrano screen in place. And you have this nice rubber seal around the perimeter here and uh, it's going to have a nice kind of cushion where it hits the paneling. And you do have another option 
for this metal bar for the Ecrano, and you can use that instead of the spring clamps if you want steel. Um, sometimes you have kind of a blind situation where you can't get back in there and screw something like this in, and that's where the spring clamps come in and uh, you're able to insert that from the face of the cabinet. So that's my comparison between the new Ecrano GX and the tried and true Servo GX. I hope that was helpful. Again, if you want more help with your overall power system, you gotta grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click the link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. I'm Ross Lukeman. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.